Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Invest Her Show. We are so appreciative to have Carrie Fakes on our show today. We've been wanting to get her on our show for quite some time, and we finally had her, have her on here today. So Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with our community. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're going to get into Carrie's uh, sto- you know, story and, and path in a moment, as we all we, we do every week. We kind of get into women's stories and, and their path and, and give you not just inspiration, but practical steps to, to actually take action on. Because Andres and I are all about like, okay, what value can we give and how can we give it as fast as we can? <laughs> Women don't have a lot of time to waste. Women yeah. have a lot going on in their lives and we're all about giving value in the way you need it. And our mission, right, is to empower women to live a financially free and balanced life. We do that through everything, right, Andres? Our meetups, our true. membership, our community, and that's what we stand for. So as we always do, welcome back to our show, Andreso and I like to share one quick tip with you. And then we jump into the interview because we just have so much to, to kind of get, go through with Carrie and her amazing, amazing story. So Andresa, you're on this week. What is going yeah. on? What would you like to share with us and our community? Right. So we are recording this in April. And yesterday, something very funny happened to me, right? Uh, I started uh, browsing it to schedule my vaccine appointment. And I finally was able to get to a page where I could pick a date and and move forward. I was like super, super, super excited about it. I even took like a screenshot, share with my family in Brazil and say, look, Tomorrow, it's 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 my time tomorrow. Right. But then later on, I didn't get any like confirmation appointment or anything. I was like, well, thank God I took a screenshot. So let me look to see it. And then right at the bottom, like bright blue had a button saying, book your appointment. So. Long story short, I did not book the appointment. I got to the page. I got super excited and I didn't book the appointment. I missed that. So, and later on, I was able to to book another appointment, but that one, I lost it. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is that in life, sometimes we get super excited about the next step. Right. I was excited about sh- showing to my family, listen, finally, we got it right. I live with my my mom who is um, elderly. Don't let her know I'm calling her elderly, but uh, older. And I wanted to make sure I'm protecting her. So that was the intention for sharing. It. But I lost the moment. I was not present there. And I think in life, and then I got the lesson, I was like, I need to be more present in every single thing that I do, right? At that moment there, what is, what is this check-in for COVID vaccination is asking me right now? Nothing else. And, and celebrate that, okay, I am present here for this task, not anywhere else. Um, that was just a simple thing that happened, but it got me, I, I finally kind of got the lesson. Like I passed through it and as if, okay, great. Accomplish it. Next, next goal, next goal. But I miss it. I I really miss that. And I, I, I'm going to be more intentional moving forward with the small things, not just the big things, the big closings and anything like that. Like the small things I've come from playing with my son. I'm playing with my son and I'm praying that uh, like playing with that Lego as if I'm building a property, you know, (laughs) because that's it it brought me that type of uh, that 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 thought process. So I just want to share. Love that, Andressa. And and, and that's coming from someone who I know you very well, Andressa, and you. I don't know. I don't know how Andressa. I sometimes think there's like three of three Andressas. I really do. (laughs) And I'm like, there's not one because there's no way one person can pack all that in and go as fast as she can. And I'm like, what? Yeah, what? Where are you? <clears throat> so my point in saying that though is I'm being funny, but you um, to be present, right? Into as you're achieving, right, and moving forward yes. and getting is such a powerful um, one of my intentions. I'm looking at my my vision board right now, and the top thing is fully present. 
Mm. Are we always fully present? No, but can we move towards that? Right. So that's what this, this show is all about and all the women that we bring on. So it's a great segue. Um, Carrie, we always like to ask the women we bring on, what inspired you? You, and you're you're not just a real estate investor. I know you're 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 a lot of things, right? We sometimes mm-hmm. go by our titles, but you are an entrepreneur and you built a very successful business, big business, um, serving a lot of people. So, what propelled you to start on the path of entrepreneurship and real estate investing? Uh, nothing really propels you there. I didn't necessarily set out to be an entrepreneur. Um, I was working in corporate and um, circumstances kind of pushed us into entrepreneurship. And uh, the first recession of our our adult life um, hit in the early 90s. And uh, my husband was a contractor. I was working corporate. So we started our contracting business. And um, it was moving along slowly, right? So we had our first child. I went back to work because that was the sensible thing to do for our family. And so while we were building our business, I was learning about bookkeeping and, you know, how to, how to run a business along with being in corporate. And the two skills actually were very complementary to each other. So as it turns out to unwind it years later, um, entrepreneurship is in our family blood and it's all what we talk about. We have four adult children that are all entrepreneurs themselves also. Mm. So it, um, it's talked about a lot in our family. So circumstances really pushed us into it. Wasn't something we saw saw it out necessarily right away for ourselves. Right. So I think that many of us, right, we didn't grow up saying, yeah, I want to be a real estate. I, I want to be an astronaut, a scientist, something else, not a real estate investor. In in real estate investing, we we have different paths to get where where we are right now. You started in 2000. 13, uh, uh, founding your, your, your company. And since then you guys have grown so much in real estate. Sometimes we label us as real estate investors, not as business owners and entrepreneurs. And I think that we don't talk too much about it. So as a COO, what do you believe it really makes a company successful in real estate? Mm. Uh, people, process, and your product. They're the three things any successful business needs. You need the right people, the right team around you. And so for your listeners, you might not have the big company that we have. And trust me, our company doesn't have a lot of employees. We've built Stone Bay Holdings with a lot of strategic business partners. And that's a piece of the puzzle that a lot of people sometimes miss. So but we can talk about that too. So people, It can be your partners. It can be your employees, right? It can be your contractors. It's your team, whoever makes that team up for you. It's your product. What is your product? Are you an ace flipper? Are you building a portfolio of rentals? You know, are you doing apartment syndications? What's your product and what's your process? And that's, that's where I really shine is the process creating um, systems and processes that, uh, for scalability. And, you know, I'm always thinking, my brain is like constantly always thinking, even just hearing about something simple, I'm thinking of a better, quicker way to do something. So those are the three keys to any, any successful business. I love that. And uh, in, in a lot of ways too, when you think about scalability, you, you said something when we, we sent a pre-interview questionnaire, and I, I love what you said about scalability is actually like, building your business as though you're going to scale it, right? It's like acting as if, and, and so many people when they're starting, just don't do that, you know? And, and, it's, and until you want to scale, you're like, oh crap, I need to now put the processes in place. And then you now have to work backwards and it's a lot of work, right? So so talk to us a little bit about what that looked like for, for, for you guys and, and what, what did you put in place how did you tackle that? Did you do it along the way? Did you go back and do it retrospect? Like, how did you actually manage that and move through it? So that's really awesome. Um, as an entrepreneur, I have always the bigger vision. I know what it can be and what it what the potentials are to be. But any entrepreneur, we're all facing these decisions, right? So if I if I want my company to be, <clears throat> excuse me, this right. Um, I, I know I'm going to need X amount of employees. I'm going to need X amount of um, software and, and things of that nature. 
but money always is the big thing, right? Am I going to invest in hiring that person right now where I can do it myself? Am I going to invest in paying for a software product when I can do it myself? You know, different things like that. That's always the balance of what we're deciding as business owners, right? So for me, I'm always frugal boogle, you know, to, to a bad degree where my business partner, Steve, Steve Lloyd is always just spend it, right? It'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And so for us, that has been a really healthy balance of him, like, just do it, you know, spend the money, it'll all work out. And me going, no, no, no. Like trying to watch the bottom line all the time. So, um, what I would have done have done differently when we were building stone Bay is I'm capable of so much and I bore so much on my back. I, I did so many things. And I worked a zillion hours cause I'm capable of doing it. And I saw there were times I was slow to incrementally bring staff and systems on. I knew exactly what I wanted. And I thought frugally instead of realizing that, I had the big vision. I knew what we were capable of and what we could do, but I was small minded in spending money. And that's where having the right people around you, I should have been quicker to listen to Steve going, just hire the full timer. Instead, I went, oh, let's, we only need a part timer right now. And so what I suggest, and this is where I'm really able to help people, it's too short of an interview right now to do it, but document your processes so that you can onboard somebody a lot quicker. So if you're a solopreneur right now and you're doing everything yourself, use Loom, L-O-O-M. It's free video software. Document your processes so that when you are ready to hire somebody or start to pass some roles and responsibilities on, you've already documented the process that'll make the onboarding a whole lot quicker and easier when you start doing that. We have actually all of our staff right now we all do that. You know, processes are a living, breathing thing, I say. It's the thing we all hate doing. Nobody likes writing a process for what they do. But I tell everybody, don't fret about being picture perfect for the video. Nobody's paying attention to that. They just need to know what you're doing. That way it cuts the time. Think about it. If, if there's something that I'm doing, right, and I'm ready to hand it off to somebody, if I can go watch this video before I even start talking to them about what I do. It cuts the training process down. So think about those things, document, document your processes along the way. It will help you. And that's the other part of why we're kind of a little bit hesitant to pass a role and responsibility off is because, oh man, I don't have the time to train you, right? I could do it a lot faster than taking the time to train you. And that also, you've got to push past that mindset also. You've got to go, no, I'm investing in my future. And the longer I hold on to this role and responsibility, the longer it's going to take me to grow bigger where I want to be. Another big question that we get all the time is the frustration about like, I got this person, I've had this person, I trained this person he or she got all my training, my information, and now the person is gone. Mm -hmm. Right. So people get, get very frustrated with, with, with this situation and it might happen over and over again. Um, how would you handle the, that specific, um, situation? Is it a mindset situation? It is an abundance uh, mentality or all combined. How, what would you do in that case? Um, kind of more probably the abundance, but what I would say is first of all, validate that it's an, it's a real fear. It's something that we've all seen happen over and over and over again. So instead of going into the higher as fear in your mind. So this is where mindset, instead of going, all right, how do I protect myself from them doing that? Go, no, you know what? What do they say is if, if people can leave you and go and, and create and be successful, then it's a good reflection on you. Absolutely. So if you change your thought and go investing in them, it's actually your miss. If they've left you and gone and created this is where you need to watch that person. And if you're investing in them, this is what I say. I'm going to invest in you as much as you want to learn. I'm going to teach you. I want you to grow and be successful. 
And you know what, if they're showing me great sparks and, and they're doing some really good things, then you're going to partner with them. You're going to give them some ownership stake. You know, you're going to find a way to work with them instead of them leaving you and going off and doing something on their own. Create the, it's all about the relationships, right? So instead of looking at this hire as a hire, they're just my employee. And if you're already coming into it going, all right, they're going to steal my information. They're going to replicate it. They're going to become my competition. Well, if that's already how you're entering into the, into the relationship, then it's probably not a really good fit for either of you. That's true. Or if you say to that person, what do you want? Because let me trust me. Some people don't want to learn it to go off and be their own person, right? Now that might come over watching it, then they start to think it. But if you continue to invest in them and invest in the relationship, you're going to learn that they've moved from just being an employee to maybe wanting to try some transactions himself. And you're going to support them. Go, mm-hmm. sure, bring a deal my way. We'll partner in it. You're going to find ways to invest in them and help them grow. I love that. And it's so critical, right? Because you know, if you really value them as a person, not just as a team member, you know, it's holistic, right? And people want to feel appreciated. They want to feel like, you know, you always hear, you know, people don't leave companies, they leave people. And and that's so true, right? That's that's the that's the case in many. You just some, freaking read my mind. I was right? going to say that. I was like, Jesus were you? Christ, we, we, we yeah, have we're the same twins. Sometimes. We're a little twins. scary. A little scary. Why, what I what I want to talk specifically about because it is a it's a topic near and dear to me because of the, my background in, in corporate training and team building, and I work with a lot of teams. And here you have a team, Harry, that you built and is successful, and you guys are growing. How do you specifically invest in the relationship? Like what specifically did you, because I'm sure you created a process for it, knowing that you, you're a process person. So, because I think that's the, like people think it's just got a magical thing that happens. Oh, just, you know, inv- you know, you take care of your people and you're good. Like you have to be in this day and age, so intentional about that, like literally things on the calendar. So I'm sure you have that something in place around that, knowing, hearing, hearing what you're saying. So what for you, what does that look like investing in the relationships specifically with your people and your partners? Well, for me, I'm a talker. So um, for me, it's about when I pick up the phone, I call somebody or I'm doing a video conference with one of my strategic partners or um, one of my staff members. It really could be anybody. Probably if you asked anybody that knows Carrie Fakes, I'm going to be, it's about relationship at first. How are you doing? What's going on in your family? And every business call, <laughs> it's funny you asked that question because I didn't even think of it until you asked it, but everyone will say that. They know the first part of any kind of business meeting of any such is going to be that for me. And what people also know is that it's real. Why do you think that's the first thing I'm asking in a business meeting, even one that I'm conducting, right? It's how y'all doing? Because I really, at the end of the day, care about people. That's the most important thing to me. So if you're my strategic partner, you're my employee, you're anything, if you, we do anything together, if you're in the midst of a hard time and I don't know about that, then, then I'm not really been a good, I haven't been a good um, support system for you. And if I don't know that you're going through something, if any one of those people are going through something, well, it's going to affect how they're, how they're interacting with the company and with the things they're getting done. And so when you have that um, truthfulness and you have that, when people are able to be vulnerable and not fear for something, then I can help support with the process, right? And go, all right, well, while that's happening right now, I'm going to shift some roles and responsibilities over here to help support you so that, you know, at the end of the day, the company is still flourishing and and we're still growing and we're still doing the things we do, but they're not threatened that we pass that to somebody else while they took the time to do with what they were doing. And sometimes it's not that. Sometimes they just need a few minutes um, to just talk about something, right? So that's how I balance it. It's, it's, um, there's no strategic, um, for me, it's not on a calendar. Let me call so-and-so today sure, sure. And how they're doing. It really is, um, I believe God puts in your path certain people and circumstances that give you that opportunity to be that person to, at that moment in time. And I, I, I just believe that with my core, that those opportunities 
um, to feed a homeless person, to open a door for, to smile for somebody walking into Wawa. You don't realize how important that is and how that can be transformative. There are simple everyday things that we're doing that we don't realize just made somebody else feel really good. That's so true. And sometimes when we ask, oh, I need more patience, right? And then God says, okay, I'm going to throw you a couple of things to, for you to practice that. <laughs> you're like, oh gosh, I'm breaking down because I have no patience for this. For this. How are you going to practice having patience, right? So oh, I'm, I, I want more balance in my life. Okay, I'm going to throw you a lot of things for you to test that. You mentioned, Carrie, about like strategic partners, right? We all have those, those situations in our business that we look back and say, like, oh my gosh, that was a great partnership or that, that did not work out uh, so well. When you, when you look back, what, what do you see like the big mistakes that you guys made in terms of partnerships, like the red flags that you, you probably didn't see because you don't know what you don't know, but now you're looking back, you can identify that. Because I think that a lot of people are concerned to scale or partner up with other people that are not going to carry the load as much as they will. So they try to do everything, women especially, <laughs> try to do yeah. everything by, by themselves, right? So how to, t talk to me about the, the big mistakes that you guys have made and how you guys overcome that in terms of partnerships. Sure. It's a great question. Um, first of all, it is real. Like um, a lot of times partnerships aren't equally balanced. So first of all, get that thought out of your head. Like don't go when you, it comes back to the question earlier. If your mindset coming into this is, you know, how do I make sure it's fair and equitable, right? Well, then it's probably not the right start for you. What you want to be doing is, You want to find strategic partners, people in that have skills and strengths that maybe you don't have. That's the power in moving forward, right? So, um, you know, one person, you know, one, I'm trying to think what it is, you know, one animal pulling, right? Pulling the plow can only go so far, but when you put two together and you yoke them together, they're able to pull so much more. That's how it is with strategic partners, right? I have this set of strengths. Somebody else might have this one. And sometimes our strengths actually match in the middle too, right? That's all good. What you want to do is find, and when you come into it going, we're going to be able to go so much further. So sure, maybe I'm carrying 70% of the load and somebody else is only carrying 30% of the load. If I got 115% further, What do I care that I did 70%? You have to enter into the strategic partnership or any relationship with what your end goal is. Is that going to get you where you need it to be? Now, clearly you can't have a 70-30 split forever, right? It, it won't work that way. So it's a matter of making sure you're investing in the relationship also and talking about that over time and making sure that that, 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 that balance comes closer to it. If you still are doing the majority of the load. Um, and I forget, there was another part about your question. Did I get all of it or was there any red flags that people could <sighs> spot it right now? Before yeah, I, glad. I knew there was something I wanted to say, the red flag. I'm so glad you asked that. There are red flags and it comes back to again, what your end goal is. We made mistakes when the red, when the goal was to make money, right? Too often with social media, with the way, with that out there, somebody can look like a rock star, right? What's that phrase, fake it till you make it? Have we not all heard that? And that's what we're taught. I like that to a little degree. I don't like it for what people make it to be. Walking in a room, dressing, right? I don't, I don't like it when people go buy a car that they can't afford because they want to look They buy clothing that they can't really afford. They come in faking it to a degree that they're not who they are. Fake it, get the confidence right to a degree that pushes you and propels you forward, but don't fake it to be not who you are in your integrity, you know, in, in who you are as a core person. And so if your goal is to make money, sometimes you miss 
the flashy people that look like they're successful. Social media makes them out to be something that they're clearly that they're not. But if you only look on the surface and look to see what social media is telling you that person is, and you don't actually do the due diligence to vet them out and invest in the relationship, I'm telling you right now, gals, we don't invest in anybody that we meet one person off. I get to know them. Steve and I get to know those people. Because you know what? As you can see, when you spend enough time talking to somebody, those character flaws usually start to surface because in longevity of time, their guards start to come down to a certain degree and you can vet them out. So if your goal is just to make money, you might miss the red flags because you see what you perceive to be somebody super successful or they've done this, they've done that. They Sure, they may have done a hundred flips and they got it all down. But you know what? There's a lot. They, their contractors are are not very good. You know, there's there could be a whole lot of flaws in the fact that they've achieved a hundred flips or, or they own a thousand rentals. There could be something in there that just is not a good fit for you. Um, take the time to figure it out. Don't be so, don't have dollar signs in your eyes that that's the first lens that you see somebody through. Yeah. It's so critical, right? Because if that is the first lens, you make decisions much faster than you would if you're actually looking at everything collectively. Right. Mm-hmm. And Justin and I are actually putting together a, um, something really special around partnerships and um, or we think it's special, but it is special. It is. And it is. And what's fascinating, right. Is like, it's very much like dating and marriage. Right. And it's like, and people think it's just business. So none of that matters, but it, it is all of that really, you know, and we don't do that in marriage, but yet people just, Hey, you could do this. You could do that. Let's go, let's do 50, 50, start an LLC and go buy a house together to, to renovate. It's like crazy how quickly people move there, but not in their personal life. So I think it is so similar. Right. And I think people treat it more like a marriage. Um, it's, it would probably work out better, right? Because you're going to do what you need to do to kind of make it work and ebb and flow. What have you seen over the time? My question to you to carry as a follow up is what, what have you seen over time? To, when is it right to have a strategic partner? When is it right to like have a business partner? When is it right to just have a team member? When is it right to just have a, you know, uh, you know, I mean, there is always a time for all those things. And I know for myself as, as someone who's, you know, built different companies, you have to ask yourself that, right? So what have you done as like a litmus check for yourself? And as you guys have grown your own company, you know, is there, is there, um, is there almost like, the, okay, the situation needs this and this is what we have. Like, I'm just curious, or a contractor, right? You don't even need an employee. You just need to you know a contractor. So is there like a rule of thumb that you approach um, what level people are coming in and, and when to bring them into the deeper level and to the, like the true, the true business marriage, if you will? Um, I, I believe really it comes down to kind of preparing yourself for those, those opportunities too often. Um, it's not having the bigger picture in mind. And do you want to have own a hundred percent of what your company looks like now, which could be this, could be this, you know, everybody's in a different place, your listeners. Um, But kind of know that if you have the mindset and understanding of what we talked about earlier about how much further you can go when you have other people, right? When somebody else is pulling the load with you, you're not doing it by yourself. So if you can actually first understand that it's an important part of growing a business is that you can't do it all by yourself. Does, um, can anybody win the Super Bowl by themselves? Yeah. No, you've got to have the right team around you. And just having a fantastic quarterback isn't going to make you win it. You've got to have a right team, a, a lot of key players around you, coaching, the, the everything, right? So understanding that first, that it's an important part of being a successful business owner is having strategic partners, is having a team members, employees, whatever, however you want to think about them. So knowing that you want to develop them, you go into pretty much my whole everything is about that, is about relationships, is knowing that this might lead to something. Like hearing you talk about that, I'm like, man, I got to hear what they're doing because I would love to... I would love to hear what they're putting together for partnerships because I, I know I could bring some, some value to that, right? So you've got to always be listening, always be talking and not going into it that, hey, I'm going to partner with this person. No, I want to build the relationship. 
add value to it. And over time, that's where you, you start to see the connection start to come together. So to answer your question, I believe it starts with the mindset of always knowing it's an important thing to do and opportunities. Um, I will say, here you go to, to bring that around stone Bay's first investment in an apartment. We weren't looking for it. We weren't going, we need to invest in apartments right? We were doing mortgage notes and we were doing private lending. And so Steve had had a relationship with Chip Lever and knew of Chip, you know, just kind of watched each other from afar and this and that. And you know, casually always said to each other, you know, we got to do something together sometime. So if you're listening, this is how the seeds of things develop over time. <clears throat> so he had an apartment that he needed funding for and he came and he met with Steve and I and there you go. The first apartment investment was born for Stone Bay Holdings. So we weren't looking for it, um, Liz, to answer your question. Yeah. But it was the relationships, building in the relationships over time, watching somebody else going, you know what, I wouldn't mind doing something with them over time. And then opportunity, when it presents itself, you, you do it. You jump on it. Yeah. I want to um, I want to talk about like the results of it, right? You just mentioned the partnership and you guys bought a apartment off 558 unit apartment in um, Georgia for $27.5 million that you sold less than one year later for $41 million. And recently you guys closed on a $75 million apartment complex. So when you start talking about zeros here, right? Mm -hmm. Some people are like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't want to get that big. Or how do I get that big? It's all about the the mindset too. Uh, absolutely, you put tremendous infrastructure in order for you guys to get that. But I want to talk about mindset here. In order, what have you done in order for you to start thinking bigger, breaking the ceiling, and taking the company to other levels? That I don't know if you imagined that before, but even taking it to the other levels that you couldn't even uh, dream of. The, you guys are wonderful. I tell you, you've, uh, you ask great questions that um, we all need to hear. Um, so truthfully, really, it does. It, it comes back to what you tell yourself. So I too, I'm a big proponent in investing in, um, in yourself. So Look, we all don't have the means to necessarily invest in a Tony Robbins event. I've gone to a few of those. Those, those were huge for me. They're doing them virtually now. Um, but I tell you, it starts smaller than that. Get a book. You know, Atomic Habits, great book. Um, the Compound Effect, great book. Um, here's a great book. <laughs> there you go. Yes, don't, let's talk about that. <laughs> um, so start doing those. That's how you can invest in yourself in a very um, small dollar way. It is, it's the stuff you put in is going to come out. So by reading a book, that's how you, none of, some of us can't afford a mentor, right? Some of these coaching programs, they want 25, 30, $50,000, right? And, you know, I totally am, maybe you're at a point where you should be investing in those programs. I'm, do it, do it, do it. But a lot of people aren't there yet, right? They're just getting started. They don't have the money to invest in something like that. But I tell you, there's a lot to be learned. That's how I invested in myself through reading, taking notes on, learning from what other people did and going. And when you see, that's the beauty in mentorship and in reading a book of what somebody else did. You start to relate to them in some degree, right? Oh, they started out that, oh, they did that. And they were still able to build a successful business Hey, I can do it. So you start to get that, um, that belief system and credibility from what other people that you identify with did. And you start to go, hey, I can do it. Well, you've got to take it a step further. It's not enough to just read it. You've got to go, I can do it. And I heard, I love, Liz, that you did that. You are bringing a, you know, something of value that people do need to hear. They right. want to hear. And that starts with what you say to yourself. So if you don't correct yourself, and so I do that in a loving way to people when they say, you corrected yourself, I, you call it yourself with your words. The words we say are powerful and they're important. 
So invest in yourself through reading, through seminars, through webinars. There's, there's many ways. Hiring a coach and a mentor eventually when you get to there. Masterminds are a great way. Um, they will project you, uh, propel you forward. I promise you they do. You don't have to, too many people think, I've got to spend $25,000 right now. If I want to be like Carrie Fakes, I've got to, I've got to do, I've got to go jump in and buy her program right now. No, you might not have the means to do that yet. Start with what's capable for you. I love that. I, I wanted to speak to something really quick because it's just on the lines of partnership. So um, for those who, who may or may not know your business partner, um, Steve, What's really neat to see, because I, I, I just, just coming present for me, so I just want to mention it. And I think this is such a major point in, in partnerships that work that, you know, they are different, right? They're different personalities, they're different skills, they're different experience. But what they share to the T is they're usually how they look at the world. They should, because that's usually a reason that partners don't work. And their, um, you know, their, their way of being. And you, you share that so similarly with Steve. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that because I, you know, just, you know, we've, we've known each other, but it's like, you know, spending this time together today. And I think that is something you want to look for, for partners, skills, experience. Yes. But do you share the same values and, and the same way that you look at the world? Like, let's get really simple here. And, you know, and Andres and I, in a lot of ways are, we look at things differently, but we look at our value, you know, it's like, we look at our value, we, we, we see things in that way, very similarly. And, I say it maybe differently than her, but well, you know, if you kind of sing the same sheet of music in some ways, I think that's a, that's a good recipe for a great partnership too. And I just, I just, I'm just seeing that come out as you're speaking. So I just want to mention that that's really cool because I'm seeing it in action here. Um, but Terry, you have a book that you just released. I want you to share a little bit about that, please. Um, excited about that. And I'd love for you also to share where the women listening can learn more about you and all the great things you have to share. Well, just to touch base on what you just said, Steve Lloyd and I, we do, we, um, our core belief of what we value is exactly the same. We value our investors. We value our strategic partners. We wouldn't be, Stone Bay Holdings wouldn't be this incredible company that it is without all of those people. And so that's our, our solid foundation, but how we are, our strengths, how we go about achieving things are completely different. And he loves to share the analogy, like if we're talking and he's going, oh, it's raining here. I want to know how hard, how fast, what direction is it coming? <laughs> what effect is the rain having on, on his life in some way, on his boat, whatever's happening, right? And, and he's like, oh my gosh, it's just raining, Carrie, right? <laughs> but that's what beauty in our partnership is, is that he looks at it, he'll look at the rain differently than I look at the rain. And that's the strength of Stone Bay. So when you are looking for partners, make sure the core foundation is the same. What's important, those values are the same. How you get to those answers, that's where iron sharpens iron and you make each other stronger and better. So, um, so I love that you said that. And um, it is. We, we've, um, the other part that's happened with our, our partnership over the years is that um, Steve's a jump, leap first, figure it out afterwards. I'm a, oh, wait a minute. I got to have the systems and process in place before I go. And through the years, we've pulled and pushed each other that we both meet much more in the middle now. It's just, it's been a really incredible thing to see in development on both of our ends over the time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's neat. So um, talk, tell us about the book that you just released. So the We're book excited about it. So fun. I know I was, uh, it was definitely not something I do on a normal basis. And so a first for me, and I learned a lot about myself through the process of writing it. Um, it's, it's a really great, um, I've had a lot of challenges and adversity through my life. Um, I was able to write about that, but show how I pushed through the glass ceiling in some events and, or the boulder and the different things that happened. And, uh, I feel like it's a great, it's, a a great way to learn about me learn about how I faced my challenges. Um, there's a lot of other really great authors in the book. Um, Mitzi Perdue's in it. She, you know, her husband, Frank Perdue and her, her family built um, Sheraton hotels. And she's got all the proceeds of the book that people are buying right now are going to um, a charity that she's part of for sex trafficking. So what a great opportunity, a great way 
something that's always really important to me is, as you heard about relationships, is making sure we're taking care of other people. And so sex trafficking, we women, it's a disgusting, disgusting um, thing that's happening in our world. It's not talked about that much because it's so horrible. Right. And to, to, to have the money going to this charity that's going to help support and, and, and help some of the women and children and people that have been trafficked in their lives and, and helpfully put a stop to some of it that's happening is um, something I'm pretty excited about, as you can see. That's great. We're going to put all that information on the show notes. Before I go to the Fabulous Three questions, Scary, before people kill me, where can they find you? They can find me um, on Facebook, Carrie Fakes. They can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn. I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, definitely Instagram um, and Facebook. Very, and They're all helpful, but those two are the top ones, I'd say. Great. Go to, the website to, get the, to get the freebie of the book, though, for sure. And you're going to send five copies, right, to the first five that, that download it? What was that? Yeah, so everybody can get the download for free, but the first five that request the download will get, um, I will send you um, an autograph book for myself. Awesome. That's great. All this information you guys can find on our show notes. Now we're going to transition to our fabulous three questions. And the first one, Carrie, is what's the most transformational book have you ever read? Well, the Bible, the Bible for sure. Um, and then um, the compound effect. I loved the compound effect. But there are also- all incremental steps that you do every day have big value and impact over time. Great. Second question is, uh, what's the most transformational routine that you do to create a financially free and balanced life? Investing in yourself, spending time, um, spending time in what's important for you. Uh, the pandemic gave me that opportunity to, you know, spend quiet time, reflective time, um, thinking about where you want to go. Um, earlier in my career, I was always just in firefight mode, firefight mode. And I didn't invest in, like, I knew I wanted this. I knew we were capable of this. But I didn't set a time time to go, what, you know, keeping that in mind, what steps do I need to do? I was too busy putting out fires. So invest in yourself. Find that time. If you can't get it at home, go to a hotel. Go to a hotel for a night. Do whatever you need to do to um, carve that quiet time out. And I, I know women, it's hard. When I had four children at home, I, like I said, I was firefight all the time. I didn't understand the value of going away with a girlfriend. It didn't matter if I couldn't afford to go away for the girlfriend, go out to dinner, find that collective time that's just for you, that can center you. And sometimes it's with the girlfriend, but don't be afraid to spend time by yourself either, ladies. Yes. <laughs> Introverts are saying yes. <laughs> Last question, Gary. Which woman, famous or not, has inspired you the most? Ooh. Um, I, I come back to the Bible. Um, so Esther in the Bible, um, you know, she, she had to push through. I, I actually, I won't tell you what it is. Go read, read about Esther in the Bible for yourself. And, um, also my grandmother, um, me, mom to me, my dad's mom, she immigrated from Ireland and, um, she faced a lot of adversity and challenges in her life. And never once was, oh, whoa, me, ever. She fought hard. And lots of these things I didn't learn till even after she died, talking to my uncle and my father and hearing some of her stories. And um, it just really motivates me. It's, it's, it's exciting because it's part of my own blood. And um, to see how hard, physically hard, financially hard things were. Um, she lost her husband when her, you know, two-year-old, you know, she only had two boys and my uncle was born. He was three months old. She lost her husband. She was in her early forties. She had to run a corner store. You know, here she is a, a widow with two young children. She had a, her elderly mother living with her who had um, Alzheimer's dementia, whatever. And here she's running a store in a business. Is that, is that not us? We women 
are capable of so much. We showed her so much. She still had to do laundry. She still had to cook. She had to run a business. She had an elderly woman, you know, mother. She had boys she was raising and she did it. She did it. So we're all capable. It's the tribe we put around us that support us, um, give us that confidence that we can, give us that support that we can, and actually give us the physical support sometimes, bringing over a meal, right? Taking the children to babysit while we're dealing with something. So Love keep it. the tribe around you. It's the tribe around you that, that um, you know, that really supports you when you're down. Carrie, love that. Thank you so much for, for being on our show. Thanks for all the, the nuggets. I took a bunch of notes as I always do. I always learn so much from the wonderful women on our show and keep up what you're doing. And, and I love, I love what you stand for. Um, ladies, check out her book to have a, have a, have her, have a, you know, opportunity to have a signed autograph by this powerhouse lady is a big deal. So bringing value, solving problems and leaving a legacy is what it's called. Check that out. Carrie, thanks again for have, have being on our show. Thank you. It was great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Carrie. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.